Hi, I'm Mark Kenyon here with the St. Louis Guru Garage. And I'm Mark Ingram. Today's topic is an answer to a question we got on the Garage Guru website. The question comes from Sterling. He wants to know, can you please explain the difference between an HO2 sensor and an air fuel sensor and what their effect on long-term and short-term fuel trend is? So, in order to explain that, first we need to know what a conventional type sensor is and how it works. Conventional sensors, as you see right here, or narrow band as they're sometimes referred to, have been around since the early 80s. All right? The idea behind this sensor is it works in a very tight air-fuel ratio, uh, anywhere from 12 to 1 to as lean as 17 to 1. The other type sensor we'll discuss is called the wide band or wide range air fuel sensor. It's also a type of oxygen sensor, but it has a much wider range of sensitivity. This can sense air fuel ratios from 10 to 1 to as lean as 22 to 1. This allows the manufacturers to adjust fuel trim much more closely to help meet emission specs and increase gas mileage. Now, to better understand how a conventional sensor works, we're going to start with our diagnostics on this vehicle. All right, we've, we've started our vehicle and brought it up to operating temperature. We've also hooked up our scanner and we're graphing some of the information. You can see in the upper left-hand corner we have our O2 sensor value, voltage value. In the lower left-hand corner we're graphing our short-term trim and in the upper right we're graphing our long-term trim. The next thing we need to do is determine what type of sensor do we have on this vehicle. Is it a conventional type sensor or is it a wide range air fuel sensor as we talked about earlier. The easiest way to do that is to find this vehicle emissions control information tag, typically mounted to the hood of the vehicle. If it is a wide range type vehicle or sensor, it will call it out right on that tag. Also very helpful when you go to replace the parts because of the fact that a lot of times these sensors can look very similar. Now, in order to range the sensor or to test it, what I want to do is I want to enrich in the cylinders or enrich in the fuel on this vehicle. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to put some propane into the intake manifold. When we open the propane, we'll expect to see that sensor voltage go high and we'll expect to see the short-term fuel trim go negative. So I'm opening the valve and I'm watching my sensor voltage. Notice it stays high, right around 900 millivolts. At the same time, we see short-term trim start to go negative. The whole time I keep the propane on, we see the trim going negative until the sensor or the system can account for all of the extra hydrocarbons coming into the motor. If I close the propane, now I create a lean environment in the system. We notice the O2 sensor voltage goes low, stays low, while the short-term trim climbs back towards zero. This system and this vehicle are operating properly and responding the way that they should for this type of sensor. Next, we want to look at our wide range air fuel sensor. We're now looking at the wide range air fuel ratio on this Toyota, and you'll notice that things react a bit differently than they did on Mark Kenyon's display of the conventional O2. As you look at the screen, the data in the top left represents the short term fuel trim. And you'll notice the trim values are almost dead flat. It's a very even, very tightly controlled air fuel mixture. In the bottom right corner is the air fuel sensor voltage. And again, you don't have the regular oscillations that we saw earlier with the conventional O2. This sensor allows us a much tighter control of the air fuel mix being delivered. When I richen up the intake by adding some propane, you'll notice that the O2 voltage in the bottom right reacts immediately, so instead of being at the median of 3.3 volts, it drops instantly in reaction to the rich mix. And this is in the opposite direction of what the conventional O2 voltage did. As you look at the fuel trim on the top left, you'll notice that it went negative, which is a reaction to the added fuel and it's subtracting fuel to compensate for this propane. When I shut off the flow of propane, again, you'll notice that the voltage in the bottom right goes high, 
because now we have a relatively lean exhaust, so we get an instant reaction to that. The fuel trim, again, goes high in the top left corner as a reaction, but within a very short period of time, both signals level out, which again illustrates that the wide range air fuel sensor gives us a much tighter control of the air fuel mix being delivered. This is a great asset in helping us get the best fuel mileage and the tightest emission control. As you saw from our earlier demonstrations, there's a big difference between the conventional oxygen sensors and the wide range air fuel sensor systems. The more understanding you have of these, the better off you're gonna be. Guys, Toyota makes it kinda of easy for you to test their air fuel sensors on their vehicles. They actually have a test that's built into the scanner that you can use to test the performance of that sensor. You can command it rich, and you can command it lean, and you get the result. Not all manufacturers are that nice or that kind to you. Most, after you diagnose the circuit, will tell you to replace with a known good part. The more information you have on these two systems, the better off you're going to be. It will save you time and money in diagnostics. A great resource for additional information is Garage Guru Training at fmgaragegurus.com. I'm Mark Ingram. And I'm Mark Kenyon. Thank you.